Good day everyone and welcome to my Hyrulestorm guide for Magicka Sorcerer PvP. Let me start out by saying that not a whole lot has changed this patch, they focused mostly on performance updates and they actually managed to do quite a change in performance, only not in the positive direction they intended, but that's not the point. That is the reason that this guide is going to be a little bit shorter than they usually are, but as per usual I will deal with a few general points first and then I will go and present the builds for this patch, which are not as many as the last patch, and then um, as a last part I will also do honorable mentions, which will all contain some of the builds that I presented last patch but that I decided not to use anymore um, going from now. Now for those builds you can also always find them in the Discord server in links as well as in the description in this video. Any questions can also be asked in either this comment section or on the Discord so feel free to go to either of those. Now let's get into the general changes for this patch. There's not that much as I said but a couple of things I do want to touch upon are as follows. First of all the um, Vampire Drain skill Accelerating Drain. They have nerfed that out, um, now it only stuns after 3 seconds instead of immediately, which kind of made the skill a lot worse to use because it is not as easy anymore to burst with it. The damage, um, if you try to burst with it, is not going to be as high by far, so you're better off using a stun like streak, which is something I was using in previous patches already, but that was simply out of preference. Those buff guns were equally like usable. usable. But uh, now they have kind of gutted the train essence stun, and I would not recommend using it anymore. Now, as you see, I have switched to vampire now, though. As last patch, I was not yet a vampire, but now I have taken it up because the drawbacks of being a vampire have really diminished a lot over the previous patches to the point where I now really find it worth it uh, going for vampire. The main drawbacks of being it are of course the extra fire damage you take um, but that is mostly from magic and decays and those are not really a threat anymore these days you don't see them much for starters but even when you do see them and they have high damage and can kill you it's still rather easy to just out kite them and by that i don't mean running away from them but literally when you are in fight just staying out of their grasp all the time as most of the time they don't have a gap closer either then the second drawback of being a vampire is the fighter skills skills, especially the ultimate of course, Dawnbreaker. Stamina players are really quite a problem this patch uh, to fight for me. Uh, you will see more about that later in the in the champion point setups. But luckily they don't always use Dawnbreaker by far. Most prefer to use either the class ultimate such as Leap or the um, Onslaught ultimate or anything like that. Last note I want to make about is that there's of course also fire damage from light attacks, from staves, etc. But then that also mostly covers enemy magic sources, etc. Which I don't really consider as uh, a serious threat anymore either. So I'm quite, I'm, 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 I don't, I'm not too bothered by taking that extra flame damage anymore. Then another main thing that they changed this patch is the calculations and cost reduction. I'm not going to go very far in that. I'm simp the result of that is simply that High Elf has gained another bit of an edge over Breton in terms of what race you want to choose for the Magicka Sorcerer. If you are already a Breton, I do not recommend changing to High Elf because it's not really worth your crowns as it is still a very minimal difference overall. If you are making a new source, however, I do recommend going with the High Elf now, as it has, as I said, a slightly extra edge over Breton. Of course, there are more general explanations to do about Magicka Sorcerer, however, I have already covered most of those in terms of skill use and everything in the previous guide, so I want to refer to that one, the uh, guide of the previous patch, um, to the general section of that, if you want a more detailed explanation about a lot of general stuff and skills and whatnot in, certain, in terms of mechanics. For this skill, I'm going to keep it a little bit shorter and I'm not going to repeat a whole bunch of things from before. So, that being said, I'm going to go into the builds now. There are not as many builds as last patch, for reasons that are mentioned in the um, honorable mentions section in this guide, which comes at the end. And there will only be two groups anymore of builds. The two groups that there will be now is the pet builds and the non-pet builds. Each of those will have each of those groups will have a couple of combinations of sets and skills, of which I will explain the benefits and drawbacks from. 
and both of those groups will also be usable in both CP and NoCP, however you will need to do a few adjustments for NoCP, which I will mention throughout the guide. As always, the build links will be in the description of this video as well as in the Discord server. Those links also have the details um, in terms of enchantments and um, champion points, etc. However, I do want to stress that, uh, especially for enchantments, um, you want to just go with whatever suits you. For example, if you feel like you lack some stamina sustain, some maximum stamina, you can go for more tri-set enchantments. But if you feel you're fine on that and you would rather have bigger shields, it is better to go for maximum magic enchantments. However, you don't want to do that too much because then your health will drop too much as well, which then reduces the defense again. So you can play around with it a little bit in, with the CP and the enchantments to what you like. What you see in the builds is simply going to be what I prefer. The last point I want to mention about the CP is that I have done a couple of changes in general in the builds you will see. Um, in the CP setups you will see. In terms of the defense, I have put more points into Hardy and into the um, champion point passive for direct damage. I have forgotten the name here. Um, Ironclad over here. This is mostly because, as I said before, the main problem I have this patch are stamina players. Not players with dots or with magical damage. Those can also be annoying, but stamina players are definitely on my top priority to... Um, build my defenses against, which is why I have changed my CP around a little bit. However, much is still the same as last patch, and again, you can find everything in the build links. In the setups um, that I will present, you will often find that I am using uh, Bright Rose Burst in combination with the Infusion Drink. However, you can also always replace that with the Seducer set and the uh, Sugar Skulls food. Now, the Seducer set, which is still um, a really nice uh, option next to the classic uh, Bright Trust Burst setup is going to give you about the same stat page if you count in the cost reduction with the sugar, with the sugar skulls on top of it as the Bright Trust Burst and Infusion Drink will give you. So which one of you pick is up to you. Um, I you will just use see me going with Bright Trust Burst and Infusion just because it looks nicer on the stat page. However, you can go with whatever which one you prefer and your sustain will be and your sustain damage and everything will be about the same. Another set I want to uh, mention related to that is the Perfected Falls God set. Um, that set is still also a really good option um, for PvP, but mostly focused on small scale kind of gameplay. Because the magical return that it gives you also counts on uh, kills that you do not uh, have the final blow on, but also just enemies that you are in combat with. However, notice that it increases a lot of uh, that a lot of its bonuses are into damage, spell critical, uh, spell damage, etc. So you will need to adjust a little bit in terms of uh, regeneration. This is most easily done if you are a Breton. However, if you are a Breton, you also have the cost reduction passives, which is not going to scale very well with the uh, cost reduction passives from either Perfected False God or Seducer. So that will be a bit of a drawback in terms of uh, sustain. Now I'm going to get started with the builds themselves. So for the first group I have uh, the non-pet builds. You will see me using these the most, mainly out of preference. The benefits of this group is that they are generally more setup, more flexible in setup and gameplay. And you can also get more damage on them than you can get on pet builds. The staple build I will present is just Alfique, uh, Crafty Alfique and Bright Rose Boast in combination with a monster set, for example, mostly used Blood Spawn. With the Destro Resto setup, uh, I will start out in the Restoration staff, you always want to have Escapist Poison then. The reason I mention it so early is because this is actually a really big help and often underestimated. Um, so I really suggest you give it a try if you have not done it yet. The control it gives is really nice, but especially the CC uh, immunity it gives can be a serious help in terms of PvP because it gives you a lot of time and you will be locked down much less with it. I am still keeping the infused uh, destruction staff with the shock enchant, however you can also go for a sharpened staff with um, either a weapon damage enchant or you put the escapist poison on front and you go with an infused weapon damage enchant on the back bar. In, the, in this case where you will use Sharpened, I also do recommend using uh, Crushing Shock, as Crushing Shock will also proc the poison more often, which will really allow you to get the highest benefit out of it. However, in general, I still prefer to put the poison on the back bar with Defending and the Fused Shock Staff for the extra little burst it gives and the chance for the minor vulnerability, which is going to increase the damage your target takes by 8%. 
overall this build is quite well rounded um, as you can see in the stat page you have a decent amount of magic recovery and damage if you look at the maximum magic and spell damage chats, uh, stats your stamp sustain is quite alright as well with the um, infusion drink a couple of triglyphs and the uh, blood spawn stamp regeneration bonus the health in still will be around 23k creating 23 to 24k creating quite uh, high shields in combination with the maximum magic cap, which will not be capped by the 60% uh, health cap that you have on the shields. Um, so you don't need to worry about these too much anymore because it is now 60% and you won't hit that cap as often by far anymore. Again, this counts for PvP. Don't test these things in PvE because then it will also be then it will always be capped since the shield size is doubled there. This build that I just presented can be used in any type of content, however, for I do just a couple of changes um, in terms of uh, what you will exactly prefer. For example, um, in this build with restoration stuff, you have a lot of uh, healing, of course, with rapid regeneration. You have the rest ult as a panic button and as a way to pressure the enemy further if he's almost dead and you don't want to start spamming shields as defense yet. But there are, as I said, other options to be considered. The first one I want to mention is one where you don't use a streak as ACC. I know some people have trouble using that either because they are not used to it or because they are on console and the camera turns slow, which makes it harder to use. If you are in that case, there is an alternative, which is destructive touch. You can use this skill instead of streak. Um, that is to say, this destructive clench skill, not a reach. And you put that instead of the streak, you move streak to the back bar and you change streak to ball of lightning. Now that will take away a slot of your skills of course, which is mostly the, um, most often the flex spot, which was usually taken by elemental drain or endless fury. However, um, you do get the bonus of a more, how should I say, easy to use CC with destructive uh, clench. And ball of lightning is also going to allow you to kite a lot more. This is not something I generally need, but I do really see its value in terms of kiting Zergs around in Cyrodiil or just escaping uh, people in general. Another variation you can use with this build is by using a frost staff instead of the restoration staff on the back bar, uh, without a poison this time and infused with a um, weapon damage enchantment, which you can see like this. Um, this is also going to be Elfik and Brightress Post as always before, but now with Mulakina instead of Bloodspawn, and you're going to pocket the Mulakina by using the Elemental Train on the back bar. And then you have on the front bar no spamble anymore, but you don't need it because this build has a lot of damage and the burst from just these delayed skills is often enough to take somebody down without a need for a spamble. The healing just comes from Surge, which is a bit riskier, I will talk about that more later, but it can be quite alright. You will need to take care of your defenses, however, because they are not as much as the uh, previous versions of the build. As you also don't have Restoration ult anymore, but instead um, Undo, which is of course known to bug every now and then. However, I have found it to be pretty reliable this patch, despite a couple of really big uh, mess ups with, with this skill, you can use it as a last resort for escaping out of the clutches of the enemy. Another um, iteration, the last one I want to mention for the non-pet builds, is with the Swan board on the back bar. This build is going to be the tankiest version of the non-pet builds, because of the Swan board you're also still having undo on the back bar with the 8% minor, uh, with the 8% damage reduction for minor protection. You will be using the two shields as always and then surge as healing, which will be procked by Boundless Storm and the offensive skills you do. The offensive skills being of course either Crushing Shock or Elemental Weapon on the front bar and then on the fifth slot you as always can use either Fury or Elemental Drain. On a side note, the difference between Fury and Elemental Drain I have covered quite a few times. You can use either of those and you will have, you will have benefits of those. The same counts for the difference between Elemental Weapon and Crushing Shock. I will put a little explanation of that in the description of this video and might mention it again in a frequently asked questions video later on. But for now I do reference to either the description or the previous guide where I already explained this thoroughly. Um, about these two uh, differences between skills. Now, for this build, I do prefer to use Bloodspawn again for the tankiness. Um, there is one risk to it, as before with Surge, um, if you are not actively damaging an enemy, you are going to receive no healing from Surge, which can be a problem in situations as um, while you are kiting, while you're kiting out a large group of enemies and you can't actively um, 
cast burst combos on them and you can't proc boundaries on them because you are kiting and you're not in their face anymore. If you would be in your face, if you would be in their face, you would have died. Now, in that case, you can counter the lack of healing a little bit by using Dark Conversion instead. However, you need to take care of using that only while you are CC immune. If you are casting it while you can be CC'd, there is a large risk of getting interrupted. And interrupted is a really um, easy way to die. A way to counter that, of course, is again by using Ball of Lightning instead and the um, Destructive Touch on the front bar, as I have mentioned before. You can also use that with the Sword and Bot uh, variation. That is all I wanted to say about the uh, non-pet builds. Now for the pet build, again, I will have a single setup to mention with Bright Trust Boast, which can then be changed by Seducer and the Sugar Skulls food, should you wish to do so. This build is generally way more tankier than the non-pet builds because it has the sword on board of course but also because of the pet heal in itself which is already you can see about 15k to over 15k um, health in terms of healing. If it crits as well you have a really good possibility of going from low health to full health again in one click this way. You can also use the two shields with that, so Dampened Magic and Hardened Ward. However, I do like to use Curse instead. I want to mention though that if you want the tankiest build possible, that still can dish out some amount of damage. This right here with the pet, the Hardened Ward and the uh, Dampened Magic should be practically unkillable if you're doing it right. The reason I only use one shield instead is just because it allows me to sort an extra damage skill, increasing my damage somewhat uh, with this build while keeping a really good amount of tankiness with the hunt ward and the healing. Those two in themselves are more than enough for defense on the pet build. On the pet build. The drawbacks of these pet builds is however that you of course lose a skill slot from sorting that pet on both bars but also because you will um, be having a killable pet so and if the pet gets killed you are really in a weak position because then you can only rely on hardened ward anymore and sometimes maybe a dark conversion to stay alive. That is why I really want to stress that you need to be able to deal with these situations when you are playing with a pet sork. Many of pet sorks that I see don't really know what to do anymore once their pet gets taken down by either focused uh, like damage from one player or just random damage that flies around any anywhere. You need to be able to deal with these situations if you play a pet sork. It's not that hard, you simply need to recast the pet when you are CC immune or you go into LOS and, CC and cast the pet again, or you streak to the enemy, which also gives you some extra time to cast the pet. It should be your number one priority to get that pet back up after it's been taken down. Otherwise, with these defenses only being harmed, ward, and sometimes dark conversion, you're not going to survive very long, even against only one player. As an ultimate on the front bar, I still like to use um, Edge Knock on the pet builds. You can consider Overload, which works really no nicely with Elemental Weapon, but um, because the pet builds are often a bit more stationary and focused on just holding your ground somewhere, I do like, really like the Edge Knock for that. The Edge Knock in itself is also going to add on to your defenses because, defenses because of the LOS uh, it gives, which further increases the tankiness of the pet builds, and that is the main benefit they have over the non-pet builds. They are generally also easier to use, is something that's also something I want to mention. Um, because the easy healing you get this way, and if you are starting out on the Mesh I do try uh, to recommend uh, just trying out pets uh, to begin with. But you want to make the switch to trying out other builds, uh, especially non pet builds, quickly. Um, because they do have some benefits, as in extra damage and flexibility as well. That is it for the builds. I just want to. Um, quickly finish off with mentioning some stuff about the battlegrounds and uh, no cp serial in no cp serial um in general i do like to go with engine guardian instead of uh, blood spawn simply because with or without blood spawn i always feel squishy in no cp i get more benefit of having the huge amount of extra resources that Engine Garden is going to give instead of the resistances from Blood Spawn. The Magicka, of course, is going to allow you to just streak all around and through your enemy, which allows you to kite or just stay out of their uh, damage range for quite some time. The Stamina Sustain is going to allow you to spam Roll Dodge, which is a really useful tool either for damage mitigation or getting out of a tricky situation. In general, that I find more useful than the Sustain and Ultimate Regeneration from Blood Spawn. You might also need to change a couple of regenerations to uh, a couple of enchants to regeneration if you still lack uh, magical stamina sustain. However, I like to do it just like that with this change right here. Now for battlegrounds, um, 
Also, as in OCP, if I run any of the previous builds, I do like to run Engine Guardian, but if possible, I would like to run something that has Fury in it. If I had that build from with purely focused on damage uh, from earlier, which uh, doesn't have a spam bolt, then I do like to keep the extra damage uh, from Molakina, but for, from every other one, I prefer to switch to Engine Guardian instead, because as I explained before, it gives me more benefit than Bloodspawn does. Now, for the honorable mentions, um, those of you who have also watched the previous guide will have noticed that two groups of builds have definitely fallen out. First one being the one with the highest amount of stamina sustain, and the second one being the specific battleground build um, I used to have in Heavy Arm with Torx Pact and Necropotence. The reason for the first build dropping is because the extra stamina sustain is really getting redundant over the uh, amount of extra stats you can otherwise get with other builds. It is still nice for the roll dodges, and roll dodges are very potent, however with the base stamina sustain you can get from just using uh, Tristad enchantments, maybe uh, like the high elf sustain passive and blood spawn sustain passive for uh, sustain bonus. I find I have enough stamina regeneration to survive quite well and to stop myself from dying from running out of stamina. In no CP, I might still want to consider a build like Shackle Breaker and Bright Trust Boast, but uh, in general for CP, camp for CP gameplay, the stamina sustain is quite alright, and that's why I have dropped this build away. The second build I dropped away is, as I mentioned, a specific Battleground build. Um, as I explained every time, the, this, that build was really focused on group gameplay, so you would rely on your own group for a lot of survival and extra damage while you would control the enemy group with the uh, ice wall and the ultimate etc. But battleground queues are now solo, which means that groups don't play together as much and the fights move around much quicker and for this old battleground build that's not convenient because it focuses, as I said, on group gameplay and on just covering an area um, with well the AoEs in that build and just driving groups out like that, which is not which does not which is not very useful anymore for the current battleground queues. It is better to just go with a build that has a good amount of damage and especially just fury on it, because fury is going to allow you just to just steal every kill. So if you go for a battleground build, I really recommend having fury in it. It's a bit of a no-brainer because that is just the best way as a soldier to help your team really is just stealing kills that other teams would normally have uh, instead. But that concludes it for this build. Um, as I said, any build links you can find in the description of this video as well as in the Discord which is linked in the description. Um, any questions can also be asked in the comment section or on the Discord. Um, if you click on the channel you'll also find gameplay videos with all of these builds I just presented in this guide. And lastly I'm also live on Twitch which is also linked in the description if you wish to see these things um, in live gameplay there as well you can ask any questions you want. In any case thank you very much for watching this guide, I hope it has been useful and I will see you next time.